Welcome to Slain Excel Dragons video number 39. Hey, these are the videos that accompany this book, and we are in chapter 6, about to embark on one of the most exciting topics, pivot tables and pivot charts. Now in this video, we're going to see that pivot tables and pivot charts are so easy to create, unlike the rumor that exists in the working world and in academia. The rumor is, of course, that pivot tables are hard. You know, when you go to take a class, you always get pivot tables at the very end when they're doing advanced stuff. Forget it. The pivot tables are so easy. We're going to look at 19 uh, topics. These, this, this video is all about the basics of pivot tables and pivot charts, and then in later videos we'll get into specific uh, applications. Let's go over to our workbook. Excel is fun start. You could download that from clicking on the link below the video or get it from the DVD and we're going to start on the sheet PT data. Now for all of our data analysis features, sort, pivot table, subtotal, filtering, etc. Got to have a properly set up data set. Fields in the first row, records in rows. We've mentioned this many times so far in this book. Once you have that, then we can do our data analysis. Now pivot tables, what are they? The big thing is when you're learning them, the thing that will help is if you visualize the table first. So imagine your boss comes in and says, and now give me a report summarized region and sales rep. Uh, this, we want the sales report. What that means is they said region and sales rep. Immediately you think two criteria. And since they wanted you know, to add sales or average or whatever it is, they were going to use this column. We've seen this so many times so far in the book. We have two columns. We're going to have to match criteria. And they come over here and add all the numbers from this column. But in earlier videos, we did it with formulas. And we had to you know, match the criteria and everything. But not with pivot tables. Pivot tables, you just click and drag. And it does it all for you automatically. But here it is. So you have these two columns. Let's go over to the sheet Visualize. And this is the trick to understanding how a pivot table works. You, got, you need to visualize it first. So if they say uh, region and sales rep. Well, we're going to, we decided to put sales rep in the row header. So you have these row headers here. And then the region is going to go up into the column headers or column labels. And the intersecting cell for any one of the variables up at the column header and variables at the row header. That given cell right there says add or average or whatever your calculation is, given that criteria and that criteria. So visualizing your table like this, which actually in this book so far, we've already done this, this exact type setup, I don't know, 10 or 5 or 10 times. So we're kind of used to understanding row headers and column headers. But for people who may have not you know, had that practice, it, organizing some visualization like this before you start makes it super easy. All right, let's go back to our sheet. All right, just like all the other data analysis features, click in one cell and then go to the data ribbon. And lo and behold, there's no pivot table. You know, in earlier versions before 2007, of course, the pivot table was organized in the data menu with the sort and filter and all that kind of stuff. But no, in 2007 and 10, they put it on the insert ribbon. So you can insert a pivot table. So you click this and then click right here. Now there's a keyboard shortcut. And uh, so I'm going to do it. And we're going to do this so many times. It's Alt and then, oops, Alt. And then you could see the N. And then there's a V, Alt N to get to the, you have to type, type N. And then a V to get to the pivot table. And a T to get, so it's Alt N V T. Alt N V T. And this is actually quite a polite dialog box compared to earlier versions where there was a three-step kind of a wizard. Here there's just a one step. It says, hey, where do you, where's your data? Because your data is set up properly with field names and records, et cetera, like we mentioned, it guesses right. The second part down here is where do you want to put your pivot table, either on a new worksheet or existing worksheet. Uh, earlier in the book, we saw how to do it on an existing worksheet, I think. Oh, we saw both. But here we're going to do it on a new worksheet. Now here's what's so awesome about the pivot table. Maybe I'm going to uh, collapse this down just a moment. 
and scrunch this all together here. Look over here. It already kind of um, has a picture here. Since we visualized up front, we know that these are row headers and these are column headers. It's also trying to give you a hint here. This is a picture of the field list. Notice these are the, na the field names we have from our table. It's suggesting that you just check and it will create a table automatically. Now, uh, sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm, I like to do the drag method instead of the uh, checkbox. But look at this column labels. Because we already visualized, we know whichever variable we want in the column, that's where that goes. There's even a little picture column. Over here we have row labels. We already visualized, so we know the items we want in the row. That's going to be sales rep, right? And there's a picture right there. Values, that whatever field you want to do your calculation upon, that's where it goes. And then we'll see later that this is an awesome uh, filter for the whole table. It's actually a third variable. So watch this. I'm going to drag uh, sales rep as the first one we want. So I'm going to click on it and drag. Now you can check and because it's text it goes here but if you start checking other ones they all get zipped here and so we don't want that. So I'm simply going to do this method. Click and drag. Now see that no, that means no. Yes, 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 yes. Now watch the icon. It has a picture of a uh, report that's at the very top. It has a picture of the column, that little blue. It has the picture of the center of the table, the val values, that's the blue I'm talking about. And then right here you can see that little picture of the row header, that blue area. I'm going to drop it instantly. That actually gives you a unique list. It went through all thousand rows or whatever we have and just shows me one of each occurrence. Now I'm going to take region and drag it to the columns. All right, now I'm going to blow this back up. Uh, no, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go like this. Drag it over while we create it. So it's just a little bit easier to see. All right, and then values. I'm going to take uh, the sales or what I want to add. So I'm going to drop it right here. And just like that, just within a few clicks, you've got to be kidding me. We have added with two criteria. Easy to see the column headers, easy to see the row headers. Again, that's why they named these so politely. All right, now by default it comes out and it says row labels here and column labels. I don't like that at all. Now this is the default. I wish they hadn't have done that. Actually, I'm going to maximize this back up. And we want to go and fix this under design. These are the context sensitive pivot table tools ribbons ribbon tabs I'm going to click on design and then over here very important report layout and show in tabular you just want to memorize this one if you like to see the field names I'd much rather see the field names there right that field name is for all of these that one is for those by the way if you don't like the totals you can turn them off here off for rows and columns and just like that oh there's our little table I'm going to keep them on that's fine whoops all right so that's layout next thing style now we go over to the pivot table styles and there's a more button now I like to be pretty minimal with my uh, styles here I'm gonna select and if you um, hover your cursor you can see kind of like a uh, screen tip that pops up and I'm gonna try pivot style light one Wow, okay, so that's just almost nothing. That's the way I kind of like it. But note, oh, I forgot to mention that. If or if you click outside the pivot table, the content sex sensitive ribbon and the field list go away, but if you click back in here, if you accidentally close this, uh, you can go back up to somewhere up here and show field list or right click show field list. Now, up in the design, we're gonna do some formatting formatting done to the pivot table we're doing style formatting we'll do number formatting in just a second but if you were to highlight all of these things and here and add some number formatting the actual cells would get the formatting not the field in the pivot table now I'll show you in a moment how to get around that but for a few of the places like the actual field name right here and the uh, description of the calculation you can get away with doing some uh, 
formatting, not through the actual ribbons, or later we'll see the value settings dialog box. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to add a little bit of formatting here. I'm going to go to home, add a light color there, light color there, and maybe a dark color here. Usually you, do, you don't want to do too much formatting by hand because when you pivot the pivot table, and that means simply to change your the pivot table, uh, formatting gets all messed up. You can actually kind of see that right there. All right. Whew. Okay, do I got it right region here? You can see how easy it is to pivot. I haven't gotten to that yet. I'll show you how to pivot all that. All right, now let's go ahead and do some number formatting here. And we don't want to go Control-1. Now notice, Format Cells dialog box, OK? Because if we format with the Format Cells dialog box, it's that cell B5 that gets the formatting, not the actual field in the uh, data set, or in our case, the pivot table. I'm going to click Escape. What you want to do is click in one cell somewhere in the area you want to do number formatting, and right click. And here it is. This is the big one. This is where a lot of the power of creating pivot tables comes from. Notice value because it's our number, field because it's a field in a data set, and settings. All right, you can change the name. Now, sum of sales, that would actually change that right there. We're going to leave it the way it is. That's fine. You can change the function, which we're not going to do right now, but we will later. And right here, number formatting. That's how you want to open the Format Cells dialog box. Now watch, click. It's exactly the same, except for you're, you're actually formatting the entire field you know, in, in accordance with this, the labels over here. So I'm going to click uh, Currency or something like that. Do whatever you want, click OK. Click OK. Now, if I start to pivot or drag this, that actual or change the calculation, that sales field has the number formatting. All right. Um, now, let's that's style and number. Let's go ahead and change the calculation. Right now, it says sum, so I'm going to right click. Oh, yeah. Field, value field settings. There's a few other ways to get to value field setting. You could actually come up here and uh, click that button, but I always tend to right click, Value Field Settings. Oh, and let's change the calculation. I'm going to change it to Average. Oh, look, the seven, the same 11 functions I'm going to select that we saw with a subtotal. I'm going to select Average. Click OK. Ch very polite. It changed it up here. I got my Average calculation. Now, what about pivoting? Um, let's go ahead and see if we can make this look exactly like our subtotal. Remember, this is supposedly easier than a subtotal. What if we come over here and we simply drag region, click and drag, and I'm going to make sure that uh, thick line, horizontal line, is above sales rep, and I'm going to drag it. Wow, look at that. It's exactly the same as the, or very similar to the subtotals. We have our individual totals right here, and then the total for the particular region right here. So this is summing sales rep within East. Again, it's two criteria. Now let's look at these buttons. These are called collapse buttons. You can collapse them just like you could with the subtotal and see just uh, that. Now if this is really what you wanted, you would go ahead and just get rid of the sales rep. So I'd come down here and click and drag. That's how you remove a file. Right, if that really was your goal, but I really want to see that there. So I'm going to drag it back down here. That's collapsing, and you can uncollapse. Now, there's also filtering and sorting. No way. See that little drop down right there? You can come up here. Oh, this is just amazing. Uh, right inside the pivot table. Now, I just want to do a filter. I want to use this down here. Um, we'll talk a lot about filter later in a video, but I want to unselect everything and then maybe say just Midwest and, uh, oh, how about Midwest and West? And then click OK. Wow, is that amazing. The power we have to uh, change whatever um, individual items, collapsing or uncollapsing, filtering, pivoting. Now how about clearing the filter? I'm gonna come, oh yeah, clear the filter. Now what about 
adding with three criteria. Can we do that? Sure we can. Let's take product and come over to the column labels. And instantly, now that is power. There's just no other way to do this three criteria adding faster than a pivot table. Now, for this cell right here, it means the boomerang called Carlota that FAM sold in the east. Now, how do we get rid of uh, a field in the pivot table. You can click and drag or you can come over here and just uncheck. I'm going to uncheck product. Now, pivot tables, totally amazing. We um, did some pivoting, filtering, changed the functions. Uh, right now it's average. I want to change it back, so I'm going to come here and right click. You actually can, there's a, a new thing in recent version here, summarize by, and you can uh, say sum instead of going down to field settings. All right, so now we're back to sum. Now, pivot tables are awesome, but what is even more amazing in uh, circumstances when you need a chart is that you can instantly make a chart with one, one or two clicks, and the chart is linked to the pivot table. So if you pivot the pivot table, the chart updates. All right, you can go up to options, and there's pivot chart. You can also just go to insert, column, and boom absolutely amazing. Now, I'm going to click on the chart here and notice what happened over here. It says legend fields and axis field. Let me scoot this. We haven't officially talked about charts uh, in great detail, which we will later, but here categories uh, are usually listed on the horizontal axis and the legend, which we don't have any, are listed in a little legend over here. What was so amazing is that right, you could pivot over here, but you could filter either here or here. Because they're connected, both change. Let's just go ahead and pivot it. Before I pivot it, though, I want to look at this chart. This chart right here answers the question, which sales rep, and by the way, we can't see all of them. I'm going to click on the edge, and then when I see that horizontal arrow, I'm going to click and drag. Now you can see all the names. But this chart answers the question, which sales rep had the most sales in each region? So clearly we can see FAM was the, had the highest in the west. Uh, Smith had the highest in the south. But now watch what happens to the chart when we pivot it. I'm going to drag, let's see, the region up to the legend. And instantly we'll get a legend. This is called a legend over here individually color coded and now on the horizontal axis we're left with just the sales rep. Now this chart answers the question in which region did each sales rep have the most sales? So clearly we could see FAM in the west had the biggest over here kinda close but we could see Galt, oh it was west also. Over here for Franks, wow the east, right? So different charts answer different questions. Easy to just click and drag and alter your chart. You can filter, so if I come down here to that button, I'm going to unselect all and say Midwest and West. Now notice what happened. The pivot table uh, is filtered and so is the chart. You could see that filter button there and there. That means this is filtered. I'm going to say uh, clear filter. I could also come up here and do it this way. They're just totally connected. So this is on the actual pivot table. All right, um, I'm going to unfilter this clear. I kind of like it like, uh, if I put region up here, kind of like it like that. All right, um, the last thing, and this should not have been the last thing, it should have been the first thing. As soon as I created this pivot table chart on a new sheet, I should have immediately come here and double clicked and named it pivot table one or something like that. Enter, so I double clicked and named it. All right, when we come back, we have a few more videos about just some amazing things that pivot tables can do. All right, see you next video.